Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we are in Los Angeles, California at the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Conference. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Eric Roselli, who is the Chief of Adult Cardiac Surgery at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Dr. Roselli, I'm going to call you Eric for the rest of this interview because we've known each you other must. for 30 yes. years. Good to see you again. Yeah, same, Adam. Just so everybody knows, we met first at the University of Michigan about 30 years ago. We're here at STS and we're answering some really good questions and talking about some of the big themes that are happening here with these great surgeons at presentations and talks. Yeah. One of the big ones is about aortic valve repair, Yeah, which doesn't, I think, get enough coverage and what I know about you is in the years we've been educating patients, you have talked over and over again about saving living tissue right yep. in the human heart. So can you tell us, it's 2025, you've been at the Cleveland Clinic for how long now? 28. 28, 28 years, years this year, it's 2025, yeah. You've done thousands of aortic valve Correct. procedures. Where are we today with aortic valve repair? Yeah, it's cool. Um, you know, at, at these national meetings, we talk about cutting edge stuff. Uh, aortic valve repair has been around for a while. And actually, a lot of this work was done at the Cleveland Clinic with Dr. Toby Cosgrove was you know, one of the innovators in this space. And so it's been 20, 30 years that we've been slowly improving the way and our understanding of repairing aortic valves. Uh, it's a little more complex than repairing mitral valves, but the principle, you know, the main objective is the same, as you said, like we wanna save the living valve in somebody because that's a valve that, uh, the aortic valve takes a beating, but if it's alive, it can heal itself from that daily wear and tear. You know, your heart beats 100,000 times a day, right? So if we can save a living one, that's awesome. And so the, the idea of an aortic valve repair is, uh, is to get it back in a good mechanical state so it can handle sort of the load conditions and then it will be able to heal itself. It's not for everybody for two reasons. Uh, one is, and, and a really important principle is, we have to have a healthy substrate to work with. So the, one of the more common problems for, probably the more common problem for aortic valve is aortic stenosis. If you have aortic stenosis, your valve is not going to be repairable because the tissue itself is degenerated, it's calcified, you know, and, and back in the day they were doing stuff where they were peeling the calcium off and cleaning all this stuff off and they'd get a repair that looked awesome at the end and then it wore out in a couple years. But people with pure aortic regurgitation, so it's a lot of patients with bicuspid valves and some patients with tricuspid aortic valves um, and many patients who have a dilated aortic root, so younger patients, if the moving parts, the leaflets, are healthy tissue and you have a surgeon who's adept at repair, it's a very kind of artistic operation, but there's more and more surgeons are learning these skills, uh, it's, a, it's a really great choice. And, and probably choice number one over any replacement option because it's this idea we're saving the living valve. However, I will tell you, and I repair a ton of valves, I think relatively speaking, um, I always tell patients what I think their um, percentage chance of me being able to save it based on some of the imaging that I look at. I can have a sense of how repairable I think a valve is, but I never say it's 100% what we're gonna do. Even though I think I can repair any valve, it's not about whether I can, it's whether I should. And so sometimes we get in there and despite the imaging, we see that tissue doesn't look like something we should be keeping because it's, it, it's been beat up. It's kind of like moth eaten looking sort of tissue or something, it's gotta go. But um, uh, 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 there's been a whole bunch of advances in sort of the techniques. The early techniques were sort of just focused on the leaflets themselves. And now there's a greater appreciation that the way the aortic valve functions requires um, kind of a stable structure of the entire aortic root. Uh, and, and that's been really kind of exciting learning. And so I think we're able to apply the repair to even more complex morphologies, which is more complex sort of patterns of disease. Uh, uh, but, but you're gonna need to be at a specialized center for that. Got it, and so this, not just special, you're sub-specialized now, Probably, I mean. Yeah. And so I, I'm sure patients are wondering, what does that mean? You mentioned you do a ton in terms of volume and outcomes, are you doing 10 a year, 30 a year? How, how does that well, I'd probably out? say if, if your center's doing, you know, like 10, a, you know, one a month, 10 a year, or something like that, that's pretty high volume. We do probably like 100 a year or something. 100 like a year. In Cleveland, I, I, I shouldn't know the answer to that, but it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's like every couple times a week, we will have that. Um, we go to the operating room though, 
as I was saying, like we have to make that game time decision when we get in there. We always go in with a plan, and I think this is important for the patients to understand too. So you know, we'll talk about all the different valve choices. Repair might be plan number one, mm -hmm. but then we have plan B and C and D, because I can't wake you up in the middle of the operation and ask you what you want, you know? So we, we have to kind of talk through that. And, and that's a good discussion. I think patients appreciate that whole idea about valve choice. But when you go through that, and, that, and, and I'm, I'm talking to the camera, to the patients, when you're going through that decision-making process, and it seems really complicated about what are you gonna choose and what do you want as plan A and B and C, don't get too overwhelmed by it. It's okay because all the choices are good. Because the most important thing about doing a valve operation is that you've got a well-functioning valve at the end, which is good for your heart. And if we take care of your heart by taking care of your valve, then your heart can last on life, a lifespan, and get you back on track to have a normal lifespan. That, that's the important thing for patients to understand. Yeah. When, they, when it seems so overwhelming, is it's about saving your heart. And yeah, there's a lot of details about the valve stuff that can be a lot, but you know, it's, it's cool that we have many, new, many options available to patients. Yeah, I, I tell people this has kind of become the golden age of valve therapy. It feels like there's so many options, and I loved hearing about you putting together the plan for all the patients, and I'm sure you're talking to them beforehand. Yeah. So you're not waking them up to know what <laughs> right, that next right. play is. Well, it's awesome, like, because of what you provide with services like this, the patients come to see us, and they're often very knowledgeable about stuff. So we have great discussions and, you know, and we, can, we can at least go in together with like a very clear plan of, you know, what we're going to run in, what we may or may not run to and how we're going to sort of work through what we see. Yeah. Well, Eric, as always, great conversations. Thanks for everything you're doing on behalf of the patients out there. Thanks, Adam. At Cleveland Clinic. Really enjoy just hanging out with you as always. Always. Thanks. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.